Hi, Mark Absalon here, guru of video production work and uh, other stuff like that here on the internet. And I thought I might do something that I've gotten an email about. I've gotten actually several emails about this, about what would be a low budget camera to use on YouTube, live video, etc. that gives pretty good quality and that I could use for YouTube and also for my own home movies. That's under 200 bucks. Well, I've got two cameras here, guys. I'm gonna review them, go over them, give you the pluses, the minuses, and everything. So, uh, we should probably get started, shouldn't we? Scene one, Apple, take one. The two cameras we're gonna look at today are the Abtec DV5800 and also the SVP8800. These are two unique cameras. I bought this one online uh, at the Abtec store and I purchased this one on eBay. Uh, Linda's Camera World, I think is the name of it. They're one of the distributors of these type of cameras. Let's first start out with the Abtec. As you can see, this camera is very small. It's small, it's compact, you can put it in your shirt pocket. Um, it's a great camera, awesome camera. I love it a lot. It, it has a LCD screen, which is approximately 2.4 across. So you, you get a nice view of what you're actually filming. The camera uses a CMOS sensor, a relatively small sensor, and one thing I, I did not like about this camera is the sensor. You have to have a lot of light to actually um, use this camera. In low light conditions, it doesn't work very well. But anyway, this camera, the reason it's so small is because it uses SD cards. SD cards actually come in a variety of different sizes. You've got your one gig SD card, your two gig SD card, and you have a four gig SD card. The camera uses SD cards rather than tapes, and it also records in an MPEG-4 format. This camera uses a Windows Media type MPEG-4, and the quality of it is pretty dang good. You have three different quality sizes you can use for video in the Aptek camera. There's QVGA, which is two, I mean, actually it's 320 by 240. And then it also has a VGA format, which is 640 by 480. And it also has a D1, uh, which is a broadcast quality, DVD quality type format, which is uh, 720 by 480. Now these cameras will give you high quality but not as high as a standard consumer mini DV cam. It has a lot of different features. Not only does it do video, it also does eight megapixel photographs and it stores them on the SD card. The photographic quality is, is great. Um, as you can also tell, the, the LCD monitor spins around so you can actually shoot yourself as you're, uh, as you're holding the video camera. It's nice, it's compact. The button function is pretty easy to, uh, to figure out too. The mode button brings up the, uh, whether you want it on the camera, uh, playback. It also does MP3, MP3 storage, so you can use it as an MP3 player. It'll also record TV shows onto the camera, which you can either view through the viewfinder or you can um, put on a, another television too. It also has a voice recorder, even though the voice recorder probably isn't the greatest in the world, but it's just a multi-camera. I mean, this is, this is one of the, the most revolutionary things I've seen for the size. The menu button brings up the resolution for the camera. It's got a time and date stamp, a stabilizer. It also has an automatic white balance in different settings you can use for the white balance, like sun, cloud, um, indoor light, etc. And you can also white balance too by just shifting the little knob over to the uh, to the right. 
Um, it also has a histogram where you can set the flash. The camera's got three different effects. The first one is the normal. Uh, the second is a black and white effect. And the third is kind of a sepia tone. They call it classic. But you can use that for your webcam or, or whatever, or if you can add the effects yourself onto the video. I'm more of a person that likes to do it in post, so that's what I do. You can also play with the exposure a little bit on this. And since this um, imaging sensor isn't that great indoors, I would push my exposure up if I were using it indoors. If you're gonna use it indoors too, just make sure you've got a lot of lights on because this little CMOS sensor just isn't very good in the lighting. And uh, you can play with that as you can see here. Um, it also has the different video modes and it also has a night shot mode. The night shot mode just kind of allows the CMOS to gather more light and what you'll get if you actually use it is you'll get a kind of a blurry image. I don't highly recommend using it, but um, you do have it if you want to actually use the function. Something else pretty unique about this camera that I found uh, that I liked quite a bit is the fact that you can do widescreen and full screen. It's pretty easy to engage the widescreen uh, on this camera. You just press in on the main toggle button and you get the widescreen or you can go back to full screen. What it actually does is it just puts black bars on the 4x3. It doesn't really add anything like it would with a mini DV camera if you're using a 3CCD camera or something like that. This camera, which I like, I like it a lot, and I've used it a lot, and, and uh, I, I find it well worth the money. I paid $190 for it. When purchasing the camera, you get, you get the remote control, you get one battery, which I will show you here. It has removable batteries, and you can buy spare batteries on the site for, I think, about 29 bucks. And it doesn't come with an SD card. That's something you'll have to be purchased separately. SD cards range in size from what I told you, one gig to four gig, and they range in price anywhere from 20 bucks up to about 50. Another thing about the camera too, is this camera, the uh, DV5800, also says it'll do progressive scan on the D1 recording. That's pretty unique. I haven't seen any of these small compact cameras that'll do that. The only thing this camera doesn't have, which you're not going to find in cameras that are under $200, is an autofocus or a good zoom. The zoom on this camera is only a 4x digital zoom. It's not optical. And when I say digital, I mean what it does is it pretty much takes a photograph of the video you're recording and it zooms in on the photograph but with an optical zoom it actually uses optics to zoom in so you don't lose any resolution like you do on a digital zoom because when you zoom in on a digital zoom you'll see pixelation and everything else I found with this camera you can zoom in about one one times and actually keep the resolution but after that you start losing it and the second thing this camera what it has for the actual focusing is a little button. This little button here pretty much has a flower, which is for a macro shot, and that's a close-up shot. That would be probably judging within like four feet, three feet of the individual, or as close as I am with the camera right now. And it also has on the bottom a little mountain and a little guy, which means an infinity shot. And that means pretty much anything past the three or four foot range. The second camera I purchased for this review is the SVP HD DV 8800. This camera is very similar to the Aptek in size. It's just maybe a little bit bigger than the Aptek. It takes the same SD cards which are inserted on the bottom and there's one difference. Actually there are a couple of differences. This camera has a three inch monitor. 
And measuring three inches is from one corner to the other. I mean, it can be measured up here or down there or whatever. Three inches measuring a monitor does not mean up or down or side to side. I know some people get confused by this and will actually think that the monitor is measured from the bottom, but it's not. They measure it diagonally. And why they do that, I have no idea. <laughs> but this camera is almost feature, its features, I guess you could say, are almost just like the Aptek. It's got the rotating monitor that you can fold back like the Aptek, fold around, view yourself, view other people. The only difference between this camera, uh, image quality wise, is the fact the SVP uses a CCD sensor rather than a CMOS. The CCD sensor on this camera records in lower light conditions. Like I can record where I am right now, even though this is brightly lit here, if I were to go over behind the camera where it's less lit, I would still get really nice images from this. This camera records in two different formats. It records in a VGA at 640 by 480, and it also records in the D1 too, which is 720 by 480. This camera's got a few extra features that the Aptek doesn't have. And some of you might like it, some of you might not. The, um, it's got games on it. Like it has, uh, let's see, it has Tetris and a few other games. Um, they're somewhat entertaining. They honestly, to me, don't really add too much to the value of the camera. This, this camera, video camera, will also take digital photos like the Abtech. Um, the manufacturer states that you can do it at 12 megapixels, but looking at some of the imagery, it's more like 8 than 12. Uh, it uses an internal battery, which can be annoying if you want if you're shooting for quite a while or shooting photographs and your battery dies you just have to charge the camera again it does have a, a, a jack for um, hooking up to a small tripod just like the Aptek it also does voice recording like the Aptek it generally does the same things as the Aptek on the focus feature of this camera it's got a little bit of a difference between some of the other uh, digital video cameras that are small and compact like this it has uh, it has three different settings for the focus it has a macro shot a person shot which they're saying is six feet and then an infinity shot um, the camera itself is overall built high quality good camera there are only a few things about it that kind of annoy me that they could go and fix, I guess, the manufacturer should fix. The first off, it's a little deceiving. On the camera itself, it says high definition video. This camera does not shoot high definition video. This camera shoots what we call standard definition video. High definition video is the resolution from the bottom of the screen to the top of the screen, 720, that's 720 lines to 1080 lines. This camera does 480. So that's a little deceiving and the manufacturer should really go back and um, change that. Just by the fact that some people might actually purchase this camera and think, hey, I've got a high def camera, when in actuality they've just got a normal standard def digital video camera. Another thing that kind of annoys me about this camera is the fact they put the mic right here on the bottom of the dang camera. When you take this camera out and you're shooting video, where are you going to hold it? You're going to hold it like this? Because this is the way that I would hold the camera. And if I'm holding the camera like this, guess what? It's going to cover up that mic. So unless I'm holding the camera like this, which I don't think many, many of us would actually do, um, your audio is going to be muted. And that would actually be kind of annoying because just run and gun, I mean, you're, you're an average person out shooting and, and stuff and you want to record some video, you're going to grab it like this. It's so one thing I like about the Aptek is they put the mic on top. These guys should really consider that because that's the best place for it rather than on the bottom of the camera in a very obscure place. Another thing about the um, SVP 
uh, camera. It does shoot the MPEG-4 just like the Aptek. So the quality range is, um, is it's okay. Um, it's not like a uh, mini DV tape, so don't expect that type of quality out of it. But I had some problems with this guy. The codec, which is the, uh, the actual way that the computer recognizes it's a video file uh, that came with the camera, is not recognized by my software. And I used one of the, I couldn't get Avid to read it, and I couldn't get a, a Vegas to read it. The only program that I could get to read any video clips that I shot with this camera is the program that came with the camera, which is a U-Lead program. And it's a very, very basic program, and it just isn't anything I want to work with. I tried and tried to, to figure out a way around it, and it might also be because I'm a behind, I guess, a version in some of my, uh, my editing programs, like Vegas. I'm behind a version, so maybe in the next update, they'll actually have the codec that works with this. But until that time, I have I can't even really use this camera except for the JPEG photos. I bought this on eBay. I I honestly think I paid too much for it. I paid $172 for this camera on eBay in an auction. For my assessment of working with it, like I have, I think it's probably worth about $160, $149 but that's just kind of my own opinion thrown out there. Both of these cameras are good cameras. They're small, they're compact, you can keep them in your pocket, shoot video, shoot photographs, high quality photographs. Um, as you can see them side by side there, one of them's a little bit thinner than the other. But they're both great compact cameras. They can both be used as webcams, uh, they can both be used as video cameras. They can both be used as camera cameras. Um, but if I were to choose between these two, the Aptek would win. And the reason the Aptek would win is because of the little quirks with this camera I've had with the Kodak. And I can use the Aptek. But there's some bad things about the Aptek too. Low lighting condition is the worst. Um, the CMOS sensor seems to be pretty sturdy. It doesn't seem to blow pixels, but the lighting, they really need to work on. The SVP, the CCD imager is great for the video that it takes. Um, the games are nice too if you're bored. The photographs are good. Um, it's a pretty self-explanatory setup. You can use this as an MP3 like you can the Aptek. Uh, the only thing that I would probably have them work on with the 8800 is the fact that the mic is here on the bottom, which is not a very good place for it. And change this high definition video on there, it just doesn't work. And why not see if you can go with a Windows ASF MPEG-4 codec or some other MPEG-4 codec that will work with other editing software. Now whether or not that's just my little quirk, but it seems to not work on two major programs that I use. Um, it, it might be that, but I don't think so, because it kind of disappointed me in this camera, because I, I like the style, I like the way it looks, um, I like the handiness of it. But uh, the little quirks, the mic, Another, uh, a battery pack that you can actually insert into this would be a lot better rather than losing your charge. But you know what, on the batteries, both of these cameras last for a long time on the batteries because guess what, there's no moving parts, there's no tape. So you can shoot video for hours at a time. And that gets me back to, before I forget to tell you guys, the SD cards. A four gig SD card on the Aptek will record in D1, 720 by 480, the highest quality video you can get, uh, it'll record 160 minutes, which is a substantial amount. That's more than any tape could ever do without changing it out. The SVP camera, the 8800, um, you can record several hours. I couldn't find any actual specs on this camera for the hour recording for different cards. My recommendation, for the four gig cards, make sure that the camera you purchase can take the high capacity card. 
The SVP, they don't recommend the 40 gig card, they recommend the 2 gig, which you can get a lot of uh, high quality video on, and they are cheaper. When you get up to the 40 gig, they run a little bit more expensive. Well guys, in this video we've reviewed two small, compact, low budget video cameras that you can use to make YouTube videos, live videos, videos for the internet, and also videos for your home. We've also gone over uh, SD cards and the capacity and the features of two different cameras that uh, we were showing the SVP, the HD DV8800 and also the Abtec um, DV8500 and the features that they have and the pros and the cons of them. If you have any questions about these cameras or have any questions about any other cameras, please shoot me an email and uh, I'll tell you what I know. I'm also planning on doing a consumer grade camera video so that you that want a mini DV camera, which by the way are the best, but they're the biggest and the bulkiest and you can't really tote them around with you. If you want one of those, which I have several of them, um, I'm going to give you a camera review on the consumer cameras out there and the best ones and the ones that I consider usable and, um, and whatnot. Well, you guys have a great night. I um, hope to see you around. I'll be doing more videos and uh, you guys take it easy, okay?